Welcome to this video lecture. We're going to talk about performance measures today. This is a pretty close follow-on to the previous video lecture. Go ahead and take a look at your screen. You'll see a, a plot showing the maximum engine thermal efficiency. This is for internal combustion engines, like what you would have in your car, as a function of the year. This comes from a paper that was published back in 2015. And what it's showing is the thermal efficiency of typical IC engines that you would have in your car, for example. And you can see it back in the 1960s, it was around 25 to 30 percent, and it's been going upward steadily to, well, here it just only goes up to about 2015, and we're looking at engine efficiencies on the order of 37 percent or so. It doesn't look very good, right? When you think about engine efficiency, you would hope to see it very close to 100 percent, right? You'd, you'd want to have a highly efficient engine, but as you'll see today, that, that you'll never get to 100%. It's just not possible. Instead of uh, your maximum performance being 100%, the actual maximum, maximum performance that you could get theoretically, just the absolute theoretical maximum, is actually governed by the temperatures of the fuel that you're igniting and then the surrounding temperature. So you'll see that in today's video lecture. So let's get started. We're going to just do a quick review. We've talked about this in the last couple of lectures, but we're going to be talking about power cycles and refrigeration and heat pump cycles, and we're going to, we're going to talk about the theoretical maximum performance of these kinds of cycles. We've talked last time about the definition of the thermal efficiency for a power cycle. It's the, power, the energy that you get out, the work that you get out, divided by the energy you put in through heat transfer from the hot reservoirs, so this is the fuel that you burn. And then you can use the first law to expand out the work term in terms of the heat transfers, and so you'll end up with this expression in terms of heat transfer. You can do a similar kind of analysis for a refrigeration cycle. Here's the coefficient of performance. That one, the performance measure is the amount of energy you remove from the cold reservoir. This would be like the interior of your refrigerator or the interior of your house, the thing that you're trying to cool down. So it's how much energy you get out of that divided by how much work you have to put into it. By the way, I should mention that these you know, work and heat transfers are over a cycle. Everything here is implied to be over a cycle, so just keep that in mind. So again, you can use the first law to expand the work term. looks like that. And so you can get the whole expression in terms of the heat transfers. And then similarly, you can do the performance measure for a heat pump cycle. And that coefficient of performance, that should be HP here for heat pump, is the heat transfer into the hot reservoir. So a heat pump is used to heat up your house, for example. And so you want to get as much energy into your house as possible. So that you're trying to maximize the QH. And then, of course, you're trying to minimize the amount of work you have to put into the cycle. And again, you can use the first law to expand out the work. And then you can get everything in terms of the heat transfer. So we've talked about this before. And the reason I wanted, though, to put everything in terms of the heat transfers is because based on the last video lecture, we found that we can relate those heat transfers for a reversible cycle to the absolute temperatures of those reservoirs, the hot reservoir and the cold reservoir. And that's shown here. So if you're dealing with a reversible cycle, it's very, very important to keep in mind this is only for a reversible cycles, so no irreversibility is present. Then we can replace these heat transfers using the absolute temperatures. Right, the TC and the TH. So the thermal efficiency for a reversible power cycle, we can re relate it to the, the absolute temperatures of those reservoirs. So if I go back up here, the hot reservoir, for example, would have a temperature TH. Let me clean that up. And the cold reservoir would have an absolute temperature TC. Okay, so these are absolute temperatures. That means that they're given in terms of Kelvin or degrees ranking. Don't use degrees Celsius or degrees Fahrenheit, okay? So those are absolute temperatures. So for re uh, reversible cycles, then the thermal efficiency and the coefficient of performance can be all in terms of the absolute temperature. So this gives us a way to calculate the maximum possible efficiency or coefficient of performance for uh, any cycle between the two thermal reservoirs. Now remember from the corollaries, the second law corollaries in the last video lecture, 
that the reversible the the, Mac, the performance measures for reversible cycles are the same if there were two if you have two reversible cycles uh, from between the same two thermal reservoirs they'll have the same efficiency measure okay so they'll have the same thermal efficiency for the power cycle and then they'll have the same coefficients of performance whether they're refrigeration or heat pump cycles so it doesn't matter what the reversible cycle looks like it doesn't matter what the components look like what order they come in or whatever as long as everything's internally reversible they'll have the same performance measure and then they also have to have the same thermal reservoirs the same temperature for the hot thermal reservoir and the same temperature for the cold thermal reservoir and we also know that the reversible performance measures always outperform any irreversible performance measures so uh, you know what I'm for the coefficient of performance rather than writing it twice I'm just gonna write it once so the reversible cycles always outperform the irreversible cycles and then it doesn't matter what the details of the reversible cycle looks like any two reversible cycles will have the same performance measure and if it's reversible then we know we can calculate those performance measures using the absolute temperatures like what we see here sometimes we call these reversible performance measures the Carnot efficiency and the Carnot coefficient of performance and the reason for that is as you'll see in the next video lecture there's a thing known as a Carnot cycle that is a reversible cycle that gives you these maximum performance uh, measures so so anyway Carnot efficiency Carnot coefficient of performance it's the same thing as saying the measure of performance for a reversible cycle whether it's a power cycle or heat pump or refrigeration cycle so with this in mind let's go back to this example we had at the beginning when we were looking at the maximum engine thermal efficiency now an engine is an IC engine is a type of power cycle and this is something you'll learn more about later in the course it could be like an auto cycle for example and what we're saying is that the maximum thermal efficiency you can get will look like this where the T is the temperature of the cold T sub C is the temperature of the cold reservoir which when you're operating your car that cold reservoir this is what you're rejecting the heat out to that would just be the surrounding atmosphere so TC might be like 20 degrees C which of course we have to convert over to Kelvin would be 293 Kelvin and then TH would be the thermal reservoir the hot thermal reservoir which would be like the temperature of the fuel that you're igniting now I looked this up in the typical temperatures for ignited fuel you know gasoline that you might you know burn in the cylinder of your engine might be on the order of 550 Kelvin so that's a t it, it can vary depending on the engine design and the type of gasoline you're using and such but 550 Kelvin is a pretty typical number and if you use those numbers then what you'll find is that the maximum thermal efficiency comes out to be about 46.7 percent so that's the best you're going to get that's the ideal situation every real IC engine will have an efficiency less than that if these are the uh, the temperatures involved okay so when you look at these numbers here we're dealing with numbers you know a little bit less than 40 percent they don't like they don't look quite so bad anymore you know 40 percent is pretty darn close to the best possible case you're going to get you'll never get to 100 percent it's just not possible with these kinds of temperatures so when people talk about automobile engines being on the order of 35 percent efficient that number is not quite as bad as it sounds because the best you're going to get is going to be something on the order of you know 45 to 50 percent now one way you can increase that efficiency is if you look at the equation here you can try to reduce the cold reservoir temperature now you're not going to have a lot of control over that in practice right in an automobile application the surrounding temperature at what when you reject heat it's to the surrounding atmosphere so you're limited to whatever the surrounding atmosphere temperature is uh, you know I use 20 degrees C here but uh, you know maybe in the winter it's a little bit colder so your efficiency goes up a little bit more at least the maximum possible efficiency goes up a little bit more but it doesn't vary a whole lot right what you do have a lot more control over is the th this is the temperature of the fuel that you're igniting you know once the, the combustion products what that temperature is 
So if you change your formulation for your fuel, that might get you a higher TH. Or you could perhaps change the, the design of your, of your cycle so that it operates at a higher temperature, like, like a diesel cycle actually will have a higher set of temperatures than a spark ignition kind of engine. And so they tend to have a little bit higher maximum thermal efficiency. But those are the only knobs you really can turn in terms of getting the maximum theoretical efficiency here. It's, it's usually just the TH that you have the most control over. Now, I should mention again that this reversible thermal efficiency and the reversible uh, coefficients of performance, those are the best possible case. And as I mentioned here, you know, you can increase, like, for example, the power efficiency here by decreasing TC and increasing TH. Now, for a real power cycle, the thermal efficiency, of course, will be less than what we have here, but the trends with regard to temperature tend to be, they tend to follow what you get from these reversible cycles. So, in a real power cycle, if you decrease the cold reservoir temperature or increase the hot reservoir temperature, in general, it'll follow the same kinds of trends that you see here. So decreasing the cold reservoir temperature will tend to improve the efficiency of a real power cycle. Increasing TH will tend to increase the efficiency of a real power cycle. So even though what we've derived here is in terms of the temperature effects is for an ideal, you know, reversible case, the same trends hold true for real power cycles that have irreversibilities in them. I should mention that the, the temperatures like in a real power cycle, what, we're, what I'm talking about here are the average temperatures. You'll see later on when we talk about something like a Rankine cycle that the temperature in the hot reservoir and the cold reservoir don't, especially the hot reservoir, it's not necessarily a constant temperature, but it, it changes throughout the process. So when I talk about the trends with these reservoir temperatures, it, in real life I'm talking about the trends with the average reservoir temperatures. It's something you'll see a bit later. Okay, I think that's pretty much all I wanted to cover in this video lecture. So just the main things to, to recap is that when you're dealing with reversible cycles, the maximum performance measures are based on the absolute temperature of the hot and cold reservoir. These expressions that I've derived here are specifically for reversible. You know, I, I really need to highlight this. It's, they're specifically for reversible cycles. It's the best performance you're going to get. Real life, you know, cycles with irreversibilities will have a performance measures that'll be less than what you have here, even though the trends tend to be the same with the temperature of the hot and cold reservoirs. And then the other thing is just keep in mind when you hear, you know, like a gasoline engine's only 35% efficient, that's actually not quite as bad as what you might think. If it's based on heating of fuel, the, the maximum performance you're gonna get is like what I derived up here. You know, it's, it's going to be on the order of 40 to 50 percent. So you're not, you know, 35 percent efficient engine isn't too far from what the maximum is. Okay, with that, I think uh, I covered everything that I wanted to for this video lecture. It's a shorter one.